and again. Goil makes good things happen. This time, Goil has introduced Super XP Run 95, a higher grade fuel loaded with additives and yet sold at the same price as normal fuel. Goal Super XP Run 95 enhances engine performance like never before. It maintains the engine by keeping it clean from carbon deposits. Goal Super XP Run 95 is designed to burn slowly and thus improves fuel economy, making you save money after several kilometers. Goal Super XP Run 95 gives you a smooth driving experience that is less vibrations. Fill up with Goal Super XP Run 95. Now there's no need to pay more for any higher grade fuel. Goil has that sorted. Goil, good energy. Electricity, electricity, our taxes. Our taxes, our future. Because you see, without our taxes, we wouldn't have good roads, good schools, better hospitals, street lights, and other very important social amenities. When we pay our taxes, we give our children free and quality education. Tell that my money too small. Why should I pay my tax? Look, small. Salifu, it doesn't matter how small or big your business or income is. You still have to pay your taxes. The little taxes from each and every one of us, when put together, could give your community clean water. Or that deprived school with tables and chairs. Please pay your taxes. It is your responsibility. It is your civic duty. It is the law. Impressive factory. If only I had listened to you, I wouldn't have been in this mess. That devastating fire virtually wiped out the whole factory and my warehouse. Remember my misfortunes last year? Serene insurance assets all risk fire policies that I took were there to pay for my damaged stocks in the warehouse. And my machines that were affected by the floods have been replaced. My accident vehicle is back on the road. Thanks to Serene Insurance Motor Policy. Currently, my goods are on the high seas, covered with their marine cargo insurance policy. I was just telling Ajima about Serene Insurance. Oh, Ajima, tell him more. As a road contractor, I make sure I do my contractors all risk insurance for the projects and then workers compensation for all the workers on site with serene insurance they will make sure they will cover your unknown tomorrow today serene insurance a new face of insurance call us now MPS Terminal 3 is Africa's new state-of-the-art container terminal at Tema Port. For manufacturers, agro-processors and traders, the new port means business can be done faster. This infrastructure boost will improve Ghana's port handling capacity, connect more trading routes and oil the engine of growth for the economy, creating greater opportunities across all sectors as Africa's markets merge and become the largest trading bloc globally. MPS, we connect, you thrive.
All right, so it's now time for us to take a look at happenings in the port and shipping industry in the course of the week. And in the course of the week, the Minister for Transport, the Honorable Kweko for ACM, a hard cause to join the management of the Ghana Port and Harbors Authority to commission an ultra modern state of the art um, astroturf for the people of Manhian in Tema New Town. Uh, plus, the fact that the Importers and Exporters Association of Ghana is also cautioning the business community amid some recent happenings in the industry. Let's take a look at these stories and more. The Minister for Transport, Kweko for Siyama, has commissioned the GPHA constructed near J. Kraku II Sports Complex in Tema New Town. The facility, which forms part of the corporate social responsibility of the Port Authority, comprises a world class AstroTurf football playing field with sufficient illumination for night games, a spectator stand, a multi purpose court for volley and basketball, tennis lawn, changing rooms, washrooms, and a children's playground. The facility is at the cost of 4 million Ghana cities. Speaking at the official commissioning and handing over of the state of the art AstroTurf, he said the facility will go a long way to inject additional impetus into the Tema Newtown community and also become a catalyst that will enhance the quality of life of the people, especially the youth. It is the belief of government that having such facilities spread across the country will significantly impact effort at youth empowerment and ensure a healthy population through sports and games. He entreated other public sector agencies to emulate the example of GPHA by reaching out to communities in their operational areas and lending support to them. I am aware that GPHA has invested in other major CSR projects such as the renovation of educational facilities for some schools in Tema and also donated educational material to schools across the country from Tema through the Middle Belt all the way to the Northern regions. These are deliberate efforts initiated by government agencies aimed at enhancing the lives of Ghanaians' effort might be lauded and they should be encouraged to do more. The Director General of GPHA, Michael Luguje, said, the decision to construct the facility was taken in conjunction with the leadership of the Tema Traditional Council, premised on their desire to see the fruition of this project for the youth and community. I also like to acknowledge the stellar contributions of uh, the following personalities in this project. Mr. Paula Sarensa, the former DG of GPHA, Honorable Daniel Titus Glover, former MP, for Tema East, who both played key roles in the project that we are witnessing today. Similarly, we will thank the contractor, Wembley Contractors, for this work that is very well done. We are of the view that this facility will be beneficial to this community and will help in no small measure to shape and empower the youth as far as raising responsible young people for our country is concerned. He charged the traditional council to ensure regular maintenance of the facility. We are also aware that this particular project cannot also just entirely be managed by the traditional council without the municipal assembly. We therefore urge a very close collaboration between the, the traditional council and the municipal assembly for a very competent management of this facility. Let me assure you that the authority through its corporate social responsibility will continue to lend a helping hand to the various communities which all fall within our catchment areas according to GPH's capabilities. The Executive Secretary of the Importers and Exporters Association of Ghana, Samson Asaki, has encouraged the business community in the country to declare the right quantities and provide the right documentations when importing their goods. This, according to him, will facilitate their trade as well as do away with any negative tag their company's image may suffer under the guise of defrauding in duty payment. Let us continue to be law-abiding citizens. Anytime he goes out there to buy your cargo and come, please declare the actual values, actual quantities, give specific actual uh, description, and do not find yourself wanting 
for such a bad news to hit the industry. Speaking in an exclusive interview with Iron Port, Samson Asaki said importers should be worried of favors that could later affect their businesses. Samson Asaki entreated importers that any time they are seeking for discount, they should go through the appropriate processes by applying to the customs division of the Ghana Revenue Authority. You generate your value, you think that the tax bill that they gave to you is so much, you can go to them and then tell them, show them your documents, documentation showing the cost of the value of your cargo and looking at the cost of duty prepared for you. You cannot pay and it's always been variated. Yes, you might qualify for it, but first and foremost, you have to apply. If you apply, it has to go through a review process before it's given approval and those approvals too should be, should be, should be backed by their law. He encouraged government to continue to provide a congenial environment for businesses to thrive. Those were happenings in the port of ship in the port and shipping industry in the course of the week. It's now time for us to go global and see what's happening on the international stage. The port of Long Beach reported July throughput numbers on Tuesday, showing its most active July on record despite a cooldown in consumer spending. Dock workers and terminal operators at the port moved 785,843 TEUs in July, a slim 0.13% increase from the previous record set in July 2021. Total throughput was boosted by rising empty export containers, offsetting a year-over-year -year imports decline. Imports fell 1.8% to 376,000, 175 TEUs, while empty containers moved through the port rose 2.8% to 300,257 TEUs. Exports were down 0.5% to 109,411 TEUs. The United States Department of Transportation is getting ready to convene the first meeting of supply chain stakeholders participating in a new national freight data platform aimed at boosting transparency and efficiency in the supply chain. The platform, called the Freight Logistics Optimization Works, or FLOW for short, was launched in March by the Biden administration as an initiative to help solve supply chain congestion, speed up cargo movement, and lower costs for American consumers by increasing transparency in each point in the supply chain. Right now, the platform is only in its beta testing phase. China State Shipbuilding Corporation, CSSC, has announced the launch of what is claimed to be the world's largest capacity container ship, coming in at 24,116 TEUs. The ship named MSC Tessa was floated out of its building dock at the Hundong Zhonghua Shipbuilding's Zhangjian Shipbuilding Base, located on Shanghai's Zhangjing Island on August 1. Hundong Zhonghua is one of the major shipbuilding units belonging to the state-owned CSSC. With a carrying capacity of 24,116 20-foot equivalent units, MSC Tessa will surpass Evergreen's ever a lot by 112 TEUs to take the title of the world's largest container ship. MSC Tessa measures in at 399. All right, so those were some happenings in the port and shipping industry on the international stage. It's now time for us to uh, take the word of the day. Remember, the word of the day is to help you appreciate and understand some of the terminologies and jargons we use in the shipping industry. And uh, today's word is TEU. TEU. TEU is an abbreviation for 20-foot equivalent unit. A TEU is a standard unit for counting containers of various capacities and for describing the capacities of container ships or terminals. One 20-foot ISO container equals one TEU. One 40-foot ISO container equals two TEUs.
All right, so you all come back. It's now time for us to zoom into our discussion proper tonight. And tonight we're taking a look at how we can promote and optimize the value of Ghana's exports. And uh, in doing the selection for the discussion uh, tonight, we had to go to the Ghana Export Promotion uh, Authority, GEPA. Uh, that's a state agency mandated or clothed with the responsibility of promoting exports in our country. And I dare say their task is quite Herculean, uh, premised on the fact that Ghana is an import heavily import-dependent uh, nation, and they have the responsibility of upping our exports as well. And so uh, we had to go there, and then we were privileged to be given the director of uh, projects at the Ghana Export Promotion Authority in the person of Mr. Alexander Dajawa, uh, who is here in the studios with us. Uh, good evening, sir, and welcome. Good evening. And absolutely, we also had to look for somebody that's an, uh, into the business of exports. And... Uh, we couldn't go beyond Mr. Solomon in Tohuyafe, who is the uh, MD or CEO of Golden Riverside Limited. Their company is basically into export, the export out of this country. And so these are the two gentlemen we have in the studios tonight uh, to discuss uh, our topic, uh, which is pro promoting and pro uh, you know, optimizing the value of Ghana's exports. Let me begin with Mr. Uh, Dajawa and uh, find out from you. Recently, you carried a series of uh, activities, uh, was uh, privileged to be, to, to be a part of one. And that was to, to fashion out the national policy that will promote uh, exports in terms of, uh, I'm talking about the national export development strategy and how we can implement it and all that. Tell us about this particular event that was held recently. Well, um, it was to inaugurate the sector committees of the national export development strategy. Mm. As you rightly said, um, the strategy was formulated recently mm. uh, under the direct direction of the Ministry of Trade and Industry as the blueprint for Ghana to develop its export capacity within the next 10 years. Right. And uh, it's a 10-year strategy document, and there are various interventions outlined in the strategy for implementation, uh, which is to cumulatively give us about $25 billion in non-traditional exports yeah. within the next 10 years. That's up to 2020. Up to 2029. Um, the strategy was launched in the year 2020, right. but that also coincided with the COVID-19 pandemic, mm. which slowed down considerably business worldwide. Right. So effective implementation started uh, only last year. Last year. And so the target is to achieve $25 billion. Mm. And so under the strategy, there are various structures to be uh, set up to enable the impetus to be provided for achieving the goal of the strategy. Right. One of which was the inauguration of the sector committees, looking at the various sectors yeah. of the priority areas that were um, put in the strategy document right. for implementation. So that is what happened, and you were also fortunate to be there. Absolutely. Right. Okay, so um, at the close of the day, with that particular you know, workshop or meeting or seminar, uh, did you realize the objectives for which you put it together? Well, of course, we did realize the objective because the objective was to set up uh, the committees, mm. uh, which had been done, and also looking at uh, the various components of the, the implementation mm. to strategize, to be able to look forward to uh, full implementation in the coming years. We took also the opportunity to do a sensitization program for the major beneficiaries of the strategy, mm. i.e. the exporters in the exporter associations, who were also heavily represented. So at the end of it, it all, we were able to put uh, to them what needs to be done to achieve that strategic uh, objective. And we also had the Honorable Deputy Minister of Trade, yes. who is directly responsible for ensuring that the strategy is implemented. That's also the Honorable the Herbert, uh, Herbert Krapa, Krapa, yeah, to give us that morale booster. Mm. And so everybody was committed to ensuring that uh, they work assiduously with GEPA, yeah. to be able to achieve the objectives of the strategy. Mm. So basically, that is what, uh, and there's a roadmap for achieving that, which we'll look at subsequently. Mm. All right. Uh, let's take a look at the year 2021. How, how did we fare as a country in terms of exports? Well, as I said, um, the base year for us for implementation of the strategy is 2021, yeah. even though it was launched in 2020. Yeah. Obviously, we couldn't do much. Mm. Uh, so, but significantly, we what, did what accounted for our inability to do much? Yeah, we are inability to do much mm. because of the slowdown. And I believe that when uh, Solomon comes, he also tell you what actually happened right. that year. Mm. And so um, we are counting from 2021. Mm. Uh, 
so the non-traditional export development strategy uh, started implementation, as I said, and by end December 2021, uh, total non-traditional exports was $3.3 billion, right. as compared to $2.87 uh, in 2020, which was quite um, a significant improvement over the previous year of about 17%. Right. So all things being equal, if we move at the same pace, then I would say that we are on course to working towards full realization of the goal. And as I said, the goal is to achieve $25.3 billion yeah. by 2029. Right. Okay, so let me come to uh, Mr. Antoui Afi and find out from you. Uh, tell us about Golden Riverside um, uh, Limited. I'm told you primarily, primarily export pineapple. Yes, tell us about it. Well, um, Golden Riverside exports um, three varieties of pineapples, mm. the smooth cayenne, the MD2, and the sugarloaf. Mm. If, if you're not the one saying it today, I, don't, I didn't even know you had varieties of pineapple. Actually, we have four varieties in Ghana. Yeah. Tell us. Uh, That's the smooth the cayenne, yeah. sugarloaf, MD2, and then the Queen Victoria. Smooth cayenne. Yes. Sugarloaf. Yes. Is this sugarloaf or sugarloaf? Loaf, like sugar bread, loaf. Bread okay. loaf, yes. Cayenne, and then? Um, Queen Victoria. Queen Victoria? Okay, I have three. The smooth cayenne, the MD2. sugar loaf. MD2. MD2. Yes. Are, are these organic or genetic, genetically modified? No, we have modified? both conventional and organic. Okay. The organic market is not a very big market. It's mm. a niche market. So mm. it's not everybody who does the organic. Mm. But we are business people. So if the market is demands mm. um, conventional, yeah. why not? Right. So that's All right. So, so yeah, please flow. Right. And then in Golden Riverside, like I told you, we are focusing on two main varieties, which is the smooth cayenne and then the sugar loaf. Okay. Yes, now um, the sugar loaf is gaining um, um, significant growth on the um, European market, right. uh, especially France, which is our major destination. Um, Switzerland and then Germany is also coming up. Okay. Yes, and then the Middle East is mm. also coming up. Um, quite recently, we are having some orders coming from um, the Middle East, which is quite good. So we think um, for the sugar loaf and the smooth cane, which is um, the type that we have here in Ghana, yeah. we have to focus mainly on it and make, make it big. Yeah. Um, what are the quantities you export and how often do you export? Well, I export on a weekly basis. Oh. Uh, we started this around 2006 and we've been shipping consistently on a weekly basis. Oh. And normally on the low season, we ship around 10 tons per week. Mm. But on the high season, we could go as high as 60, 70 tons. All right, so week. for the layman that's watching us right now, if you say 10 tons, what's the volume? Is it a container load? Um, 1,000 um, um, kilograms of pineapple mm. make one ton. One ton, okay. Yes. Okay. So um, for a container, normally a 40 feet container contains 20 tons of pineapple. Okay. Yeah. So we're talking about 20 equivalent units. Yes. That's for the 10 tons. No, for, for yes, for 10 tons, yes. Yes. Yes, yes. yes. So it means that averagely you export about uh, a 20 footer container but every we week. We don't normally do C. Okay. We do about 95% effort. Yeah. Yes. Because of the perishable nature it of it. Arrive yeah. fresh yes. and the quality. Right. Yes. And that's also quite expensive. It's quite expensive because of the freights. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So give us your. Assessment, assessment of our industry, the export industry. What's, what's your assessment well, as somebody um, that's in the industry? Um, like my boss was saying, it's, mm. it's a gradual process that we have just begun last mm. year. But fortunately for the pineapple industry, mm. um, it was doing quite well in the 90s, coming to the, uh, the, the 20s. Mm. But um, um, around 2004, I think Ghana recorded its highest um, production, which is about 71,000 metric tons. Right. And then we dropped gradually uh, because of the introduction of the new, uh, there was a new variety which is called MD2. Yes. So we dropped and we've been struggling from that time to date. It was only last year that we made some remarkable increase. Right. Um, last year, I think we, we hit um, 32,000 metric tons. Mm. Uh, and majority of those came from the air side. So the air freight is now doing about 60, 70%, while the sea does about 30, 40%. All right, I'll come back to you. I want to come back to you. I want to find out from you 
whether you are satisfied with the processes you have to go through in order to uh, get your goods out there on the international market. And let me come to Mr. Adejawa. We're, tonight we're discussing how to, uh, you know, promote and optimize, uh, you know, uh, the value of Ghana's exports. And we just want to find out from you some of the steps GEPA is taking to ensure that this happens. Because most of the time, when you meet, for instance, the last meeting that you held that I just mentioned, uh, most of the uh, people in the auditorium thought that we don't, uh, you know, add value to our exports. We just export in the raw state, which does not give us the requisite earnings that we desire, that we, or that we should be earning as a country. Tell us what you are doing to ensure that we, we optimize <coughs> the value of our exports. Well, for Ghana Export Promotion Authority, our mandate is in twofold. Uh, the first one is development, and the second one is promotion. So in terms of development, what we do is um, we work closely with the exporters and their associations, and we facilitate the processes for them to increase their outputs. Right. Um, as you know, um, we are primarily um, a raw material Exporting company, so mm. most of our exports go as primary products. Right. I.e., for example, the pineapples that we do, quite a significant uh, amount of it goes uh, by fresh. Yeah. Uh, however, to add value, uh, value addition also generates um, additional, you know, um, revenue. Mm. And so we encourage as much as possible exporters to try and add value mm. to their products. But adding value also suggests that you must have the raw material yeah. base. Yeah. Because if the raw material base is small you know, and sustainably, consistently, yeah, sure. sustainably, because whatever you do, because we are an agrarian country, yeah. most of our people depend on agriculture. And so agricultural value addition is the key right. to us going forward. But if you don't have the raw material in sufficient quantities, then uh, manufacturing or processing becomes a difficult challenge. So first of all, the base must be strong. And that is why, for example, uh, companies like uh, Golden Riverside, we try to yeah. assist them with planting material that will enable them to expand their farms and so that when they now get enough, then we can go into processing. Right. There are a few companies that are going into processing now. For example, Blue Sky and a few others. Mm. They are doing quite well, but most often you see that they complain about not having the raw material enough for them to process. Right. So some of them have to go even beyond Ghana to Benin and a few other places to get additional uh, material to, to, to process. So first, we are laying a lot of emphasis on supply side issues. Okay. So since 2017, uh, GEPA has made a conscious effort to provide support towards improving on our supply capacity uh, in a various uh, product areas, particularly pineapple. Right. where we've invested close to about 11 million sakes that have been distributed to various farmers. Mm. We've also now constantly provided support for the coconut industry because mm. that's also another important area where value can be added. Okay. So once we move beyond that, then we are going to the next phase, which is the processing side. Uh, that being said, already government plan is towards one district, one factory, yes. which is a very good policy that enables companies that are located in districts to move to the next step of you know, processing their materials. Mm. And so we are also very um, heavy on supporting 1DYNF companies uh, to go into heavy processing. And once they have processed those products, the next step is where do we send them to? Mm. That's where the export market then comes in. Mm. And we are heavily involved also in, pro uh, in promotion. Right. So these are the two ways in which GEPA uh, is focused now, uh, as in the past, yeah. to support our exporters. And it's been going on for quite a while. Now that we have the National Export Development Strategy in place, we have to then to move to the next stage. And as you know, investments in um, value addition is critical. Right. So we are doing a lot of advocacy to ensure that uh, our financial institutions also lend support to this important aspect of our value addition process which is invest in, in, in companies or in factories that will uh, improve on our processing capacity. For example, a kumfi uh, fruit yeah, and juices yeah. is a very good example that we often cite because they have been able to have their own farms, yes. uh, pineapple that farms the factory. that feed the factory. And even so, it's not enough. Yeah. Right now, they are crying for more Raw material. materials. Wow. And so we have to move gradually. We are not there yet, but with the kinds of support 
and the infrastructure that we are putting in place, I'm very sure that in the next few years, uh, we'll, be, we'll be doing much better than we are doing now. Mm. You mentioned coconut, and that's one, one of the things I'm interested in. I just want to find out from you how we are faring with regards to coconut in particular. Well, there's a big revival. We export coconut we export in the raw form? Uh, we export both fresh and processed. Yes. Uh, but processed, coconut has a very wide value chain mm. of uh, value-added products, starting from the fresh, you go to oil, uh, and then many, many other, uh, even in the uh, um, uh, natural beauty area, you use coconut oil and Beautiful. all that. So it's a growing sector. Mm. Um, but then, of course, because in the past, uh, the sector was faced with a lot of disease challenges, uh, most of the old trees have died off uh, in the western region and Volta region and all that. So there's a need for us to revive the industry. And so we put quite some significant uh, support uh, behind the revival of all the resuscitation of the coconut industry, which is doing quite well now. Uh, one other thing we are doing is that we want to sensitize the people to know that coconut is one of the top, uh, you know, uh, tree crops that we can enter into. And so we did um, a big exhibition in, 20, in 2019, right. uh, before the COVID, uh, that is drawing attention to uh, the prospects that the industry held. And we were to do it annually until uh, COVID also set in. And so now we are putting a lot of blame on COVID because it slowed down uh, our progress. Mm. But only recently we've realized that now that the COVID situation has gone down, we need to re uh, revisit the, that particular um, uh, exhibition, which is right. an international exhibition in character. Right. So only last Friday we were in the Western region in Elembele to launch our second edition of the, sh of the exhibition, which is going to be quite a big show right. uh, coming up in September. And so coconut is also one of the you know, things that we are currently promoting assiduously. And we've supported, again, our, our farmers, those who are interested in giving them seedlings. Uh, we've supplied close to 700,000 coconut seedlings of hybrid nature. That is quite uh, disease tolerant. Right. That is, the keeps and poor disease will not affect going forward. Mm. And so in our small way, that is what we are doing for that industry. Great. Okay, so I'll be coming back to you. When I come back to you, I would want to find out from you what, where we stand as a country in terms of our uh, balance of trade as a country. And let me come to you, Mr. Anto Yafi. You, are, you export virtually every week, and so I know you would have been uh, you know, very familiar with the nuances and intricacies involved in the export business. I just want to find out from you what you make of the processes you have to go through every week to ensure that you have your products out there on the international market. You mentioned Germany, you mentioned Switzerland, you mentioned Je uh, the Middle East and France, you know, as some of the countries that you export to. Are you satisfied with the processes you go through? Satisfaction, I don't know how I'm going to reach this, but mm. um, I'm not too satisfied with the processes sometimes we go through. Okay. Because we are dealing with perishables, mm. um, we expect that um, things shall be done on time, especially in the nights when mm. maybe you are late and you are trying to get your documentation done. You have to chase an officer here and there to get documentations done, um, taxations and uh, cost of documentation is quite high for us nowadays. And one other area, handling, mm. is key. Um, you build your pallet very nicely from the farm and when it gets to the port, they'll have to reduce it because of uh, our scanner. They right. say the scanner is shorter, they'll reduce it. We don't have a problem with it. But when they are finished scanning, when they are restacking them, then they mix up sizes, they mess up um, the boxes, and when it arrives, it doesn't look too good as compared to uh, our competitors from other the countries. countries, yes. So um, I believe if they look into this for us, um, it's going, it, will be, it will go a long way to help us. Mm. Yeah. How, much, how much technology do you employ or do you employ in, in, in your chain as you export out of the country? For instance, when you get to the airport, uh, do you do everything manually or you would have to go through some kind of like formalities in terms of uh, as for you the can sit back with the click of a button from your office? Every, go yeah, everything process. is ma manually. Okay. Uh, phytosanitary. Now we are having a GIZ which is working uh, to get uh, this... Um, um, processes mm. shortened for us, mm. so that at least we, we would be able to get things done on time. Mm. Now, have you brought some of these issues that you, you just raised to the attention of GEPA and the, the relevant... Yes, um, I think Ghana, Ghana Shippers Authority, Ghana Shippers the, uh, Authority yeah. 
um, organized a seminar for us last year or so, which we invited the boss for street sports. He, he even said, um, well, we, we will try and see if we can organize a training for the handlers. Are talking about Marwan Travolti? Yes, so that okay. at least they will be able to identify certain, in case they reduce their palate and other things, they will be able to identify which ones they took it from and then make sure they do a clean job there. But it has not been done to so now. So yes. Um, we had issues with um, a letter of credit, that's LOC. Mm. I think just last month, um, Ghana Shippers Authority, together with uh, BOJ, mm. organized um, a workshop at uh, Fiesta Royal for us, and then all these um, issues too were addressed. So mm. I th that's one they are working on it. For the us. letters of credit issue was addressed? Yes, okay. because it's one area that uh, is a bit frustrating for the exporters. Mm. Because if you export and within 90 days you have not been paid, um, you, are not, you are blocked from shipping. And sometimes, you know, it's perishables. And yeah. um, we have issues with uh, claims. Mm. And when it happens like that, you don't receive your um, returns. So okay. if you don't receive it and they block you, how do you work again? So um, right. some of these things uh, is what we are trying to um, explain to them to really understand us so that at least we can have some waivers and then make sure uh, our export flows. Great. Okay, so I'll be coming back to you. And when I come back to you, I would like to you to list on the challenges that you go through. Um, I know access to finance and cost of <laughs> borrowing and all those things, that's one of the things that you, you probably will mention. Because those are the, the, the initial things that everybody mentions in terms if you're a business person, I mean, it's, it's quite expensive to borrow in our country or in our part of the world. But let me come to Mr. Dejawa and find out from you where we stand as a country in terms of balance of trade. Well, um, just a little um, addition to what uh, Solomon said about mm. the, the letter of... Mm. Uh, actually, it's the Letters letter of, of credit, com yes, commitment. Sure. Okay. Letter of commitment um, is um, a policy that is... a government policy that mm. is implemented by the Bank of Ghana um, that regulates all exports and exporters who export out of Ghana, uh, that ensures that they repatriate their export earnings back into the country. Uh, because right now, as you see, we are all chasing after the dollar. <laughs> and so we believe strongly that when export grows, then a lot more of the foreign exchange revenues come into the country to show up our currency. Right. So there is this Bank of Ghana uh, regulation that says that for any exports to go out of Ghana, you must guarantee the exporter must guarantee that uh, the returns will come back to Ghana. So if you exported, let's say, $200,000 worth of, uh, 200, worth of uh, pineapple out of Ghana, we must see within 60 days mm -hmm. your, your returns coming back into Ghana uh, for obvious reasons. Because some uh, don't like bringing their monies back. They go and put it in some account somewhere, and then we suffer for it. So uh, it's a system that ensures that compels the exporter to, to bring back their export revenue into the country. So it's mm. called a letter. So before you do the export, you have to commit yourself to repatriating your money. Right. And it is put in the ICOM system that mm. is administered by customs. So if you say, yes, I will bring it back, and they see that your revenue is not coming back within 60 days, by which time we expect that your, your let, whatever returns would have been brought in yeah. then there is a red flag, mm. which means that perhaps there might be some, you know, uh, something going on. So yeah. when you are going to do your next exports, uh, the system will query you and ask, have you returned your, <laughs> have you brought in back your previous. money? <laughs> previous right. money might show evidence of it. Right. If it is seen that you've not brought it, that is when you have challenges. And so mm. the system blocks you from uh, shipping. Right. But they also complain that sometimes, you know, if you establish letters of credit, Sometimes the money coming back in the system may delay right. beyond the 60 days. Why? There, there are some reasons like claims. Okay. Uh, we are dealing with perishables. Mm. Sometimes we have delays in flights, and especially those flights in transit. Yeah. We, it has to delay. Sometimes our clients wait as much as seven days to receive their fruits. It's no longer fresh. Yeah. So um, when they are in, in course of selling, they incur a lot of losses. Yeah. losses and some of them would like to wait for their sales results right. before they're able the to pay you. Payment, yeah. And sometimes this uh, sales results takes a longer time. Longer time. Yeah. Yes. All right. Yes. And so because the system does not discriminate, once it is not brought in, it triggers that red flag. Mm. So it is for you, the exporter, then 
to go back to Bank of Ghana and say that, please, for this and this and this reason, I was not able to bring back the money. Right. And then you'll be given an extension. But if you don't do that, yeah. then as long as you wait, the system will block you from exporting. And that's a very so good So this system. is a leeway you have to, you, you probably would have to bring to the attention of the ex exporters yes, so that they yes. can exploit. So, yeah, exactly. That is yeah. why the sensitization is going on. Yeah. And as he rightly said, uh, shippers authority are responsible. You know, they look at all the shipment issues and all yeah. that. So we've been teaming up with them to um, educate the exporters. Mm. But they also have genuine challenges, mm. which we have brought to the attention of Bank of Ghana. So Bank of Ghana is also now working with them closely to see the challenges and how Best. the system can be ad adjusted to cater for situations like this right. going forward. Mm. Now, coming back to more reason why the dollars have to come in. Yeah. Because as we import, we import with dollars. Yes. And so when we export, then we, ca we get the... Uh, uh, Returns back Be before to before you, 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 you take a bite on the balance of trade issue, let me yeah. find out from you. With the explanation that Mr. Dajawa just preferred, uh, just gave with respect to the letters of credit or letters of commitment, commitment, letter uh, of commitment. it looks quite simple. And so you shouldn't be having challenges with it. No, definitely. Like we told you, it is perishable. Yeah. For my case, mm. especially pineapples yeah. and then vegetables and fruits, right. they are perishable, definitely. Once there are challenges um, with, with uh, the nature of the fruits, yeah you definitely get claims and you will never receive all your money. Right. So it's, um, it's an agreement between the supplier and the clients. Right. So once we agree that because of A, B, C, D, instead of maybe 10,000 euros, I'm going to give you 5,000 euros. But meanwhile, Bank of Ghana is expecting 10,000 euros. Right. So if you bring in 5,000, they still think the remaining should come. Otherwise, you are blocked, blocked. from... So that's why you need to explore that leeway of going yes, to explain so in, to them what In that happened. case, yes, we need to um, uh, explain to Bank of Ghana this, some of these processes and mm. challenges so that at least we can be given that um, a leeway. Extension. 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 Yes. Okay, yes. So balance of trade, sir. Well, balance of trade, I, I think we are not doing badly at all as a country mm. these days. Okay. Because hitherto, it's always been in a negative. Mm. Our imports always outstrip our exports. But right. uh, for a very good um, you know, account, in the last few years, we've not been doing that badly at all. Mm. And um, I think I can say that uh, in 2021, we actually did have a balance of a trade surplus mm. with the rest of the world, which amounted to close to $800 million, mm. which is a balance of trade surplus. Yeah. Meaning that for the first time, or, you know, yes, in a few years, our exports actually... Uh, exceeded our imports right. and therefore we have a positive balance okay and uh, i think uh, indications are half year indications are that that we've gotten from bank of ghana also indicates a very positive trend okay uh, currently we are exporting a little more than we are importing okay. so still the balance is on uh, on our side which is quite positive and so that is a trajectory that we want to go and so we've always been hammering the point that uh, export is the way to go we must progressively uh, reduce our imports mm. and then progressively also uh, improve on our exports. Mm. Because we have a, a slogan that we say, uh, export Ghana, export more. Export mm. gains, import drains. You see, so that people are aware that if we export more, even though we cannot stop importing, the proportion of our imports to exports must reduce so that we can do a lot more of the exports. And I dare say that that is uh, uh, being heard, and these days we are doing much, much more. Uh, I think by the uh, data that I have, so far we have done about nine billion dollars in total exports, half year, nine billion dollars, uh, including also non-traditional exports, and we have done about seven point five billion dollars of imports. So you can see straight away that there is a very, quite a, 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 you know, a very positive, you know, balance in favour of Ghana. And we must applaud government and all the other key agencies and the private sector right. that is leading the charge. Mm. And I must say that we are doing a lot, a lot in the cocoa derivative sector. Mm. Uh, our leading non-traditional export right now is processed cocoa. Processed cocoa. And you yeah. know, government policies that we must uh, add more value to cocoa before yeah. we export. export and yeah. I think that that is on course. Yielding some dividends. Yielding a lot of dividends. Because the next question I wanted to ask you is, uh, what accounts for this particular dynamic, uh, this particular, yes. uh, you know, shift? Process, process cocoa. Exactly. And then process I also wanted to find out what item accounted yeah. for it, what are the factors that 
you know, uh, yeah. supporting this particular Process trend. Cocoa, and mm. we are also doing a lot in Kashu. Mm. Ghana is a very, very uh, good country for cashew exports, and we are doing a lot of cashew, and that's one of the areas that we need to emphasize and uh, promote for a lot more people to go into cashew farming. Mm. Uh, we did almost 300, over $300 million worth of cashew uh, in 2021. Mm. Uh, if we were to add value to the cashew in terms of kennel and other uh, processed products before exporting, it would have getting, gotten even four times the value that we, we got. Right. And that is why we, I come back to your question about, uh, uh, you know... Uh, balance of trade? The balance of trade mm. and also <coughs> the um, optimization yes. of our exports, mm. which is clearly by way of value addition. Yes. And I'm sure that with the, the companies that are now being set up and which are also operating mm. in the next maybe four to five years, we'll see real prospects for our economy in terms of uh, value addition. Mm. And you also see... Now, government has invested heavily in the automotive industry, right. which is a multi-billion dollar industry. Oh, yeah. and if these car assembling plants that are currently uh, operating yeah. would diversify and look for new markets, which we are ready to do, yeah. perhaps in Liberia, in, in Sierra Leone, mm. in the, you know, other West African countries, okay, so. taking advantage of the after, for example, yeah. we are good to go. Right. We get a lot of foreign revenue from there. Right. Uh, and so that is another area that uh, we are also looking at. And also the palm oil industry okay. also holds a lot of prospects. Not right. forgetting our traditional canned tuna. Right. It's also quite a, a huge area that we are looking at. So all in all, I think that we are on course. So when you look at the non-traditional export sector in the National Export Development Strategy, yeah. we have prioritized 17 key product sectors mm. or value chains right. uh, led by uh, processed cocoa. We're also dealing with cashew, the aluminum and the uh, uh, plastic industries for Mm. South Africa, mm. and perhaps also now looking at uh, full processing of our uh, petroleum uh, oils okay. you know, into other uh, you know, products. Right. If we are at it and we get the support, uh, the sky is our limit. Mm. The sky should be our limit indeed. That's what we should aspire to be, uh, <laughs> where we should aspire to be. Let me come to you, Mr. Antu, if you find out. I, I said I was going to, going to come to you. Yeah. Take a look at some of the challenges that you have you know, as exporters uh, in the country. Right. Um, exporters, uh, major, you rightly mentioned before, our major concern is financing. The cost of borrowing. Cost of borrowing is quite high now. Last two years and last year, I think it was okay, about 20%, but now it's around between 26, 30%, which is not too good for us. You know, agriculture and perhaps the perishables that we are dealing with um, involves a lot of capital and once you are not um, well resourced it makes our work a bit difficult, difficult for us once you have orders and you don't have the needed resources to be able to make up for those orders you might lose your clients because as for the clients when they order they don't care whether it's raining they don't care whether you have money you have packaging you have what they don't really care all that they want is their goods to get to them as soon as possible. So um, um, we really need um, our banks to um, assist as well. Mm. Before, they were talking about collateral issues, and then the government has um, set up uh, an, a body that is now supporting um, agriculture with 70% uh, collateral, which is mm. GESA, mm. and which I'm even um, a beneficiary of it. Okay. And it is helping. Even with this, I think the banks are still a bit sluggish about... Uh, but there's Exim Bank, and I think that Exim Bank should be benefiting some people like you. Are you not, what, what's happening with it? Yeah, well, um, well, we have applied for it, but, you know, um, it is not just one sector. Mm. The sectors are Multiple. more. So um, uh, we don't know when it will get to our turn. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, I get it, yeah. Yes. So um, we, maybe in future we'll, it will get to our turn. <laughs> Yes. Shouldn't, shouldn't GEPA be supporting them and pushing, you know, GEPA pull, has, pulling some strings GEPA at, at is doing, bank to, No, to, GEPA is doing what it, it could. Mm. Like um, 2018, 2019, mm. when they saw that our sector has issues with um, getting this smooth cayenne uh, back to the system, they assisted farmers with over 11 million sockets, which well, I also yeah, benefit, yeah. benefited about 2 million sockets out wow. of it. Right. Yes, so they are doing their best. They are supplying coconut seedlings and other 
areas where they are also putting in much effort. But financing, sometimes, you know, it goes beyond them. So um, we were looking at our banks to do this for us. And also our land issues. Mm. Yes, the rate of encroachment is becoming high. Yeah. And if you're a farmer, your major asset is your land. Mm. And if you approach these banks to assist you to um, acquire your land, sometimes they drag their feet a bit because um, they think the land will not give them money quickly or something. So um, uh, I, I think um, our bankers should go back to the drawing board and really look into our operations and assist us. Because if they do, that is what is going to bring in a lot of foreign uh, exchanges to, to the country. Yeah. Right. Let me come to you. The suckers, yeah. the 11, 11 suckers that you distributed to the farmers, do they pay back or yes, give it to them to, to, for free? Well, um, before I, I... Because I, that would yeah. be a, view, a very huge investment. Yes. Okay. Before I, I say that, let mm. me quickly say that um, in terms of the financing, we've also been doing our bit, um, mm. advocating strongly for additional financing for our exporters. Right. Because, you know, they've done very well by uh, going... Um, on their own for quite a while now, but without uh, you know financial support, it will be difficult for them to expand. Right. And so all we can do at GEPA for now is to do the advocacy on behalf of our exporters because we ourselves don't have uh, you know that pot of gold that we can uh, use in supporting them. Yeah. And there are uh, agencies or let me say institutions that are responsible for providing that kind of support, uh, i.e. particularly the banks. Right. So we do encourage a lot of the banks to turn their, um, to focus also on the export sector. And I, I know that the Stambik Bank, for example, uh, we've been working with them, advocating for exporters and all that. And as a result of that, most of them have now set up export departments. Right. Later through, they didn't have export departments. Okay. But some of them are beginning to, to see the light and which they, is quite significant. Which is quite significant. Yeah. And they are giving more and more uh, financial assistance to mm. exporters. I know Stanby Bank because we've been dealing with them. Um, recently also, uh, we've been speaking to Carl Bank, who are also willing to come support. in and support. Mm. So I'll just use this platform again to appeal to our banks uh, that they should look at exports. Because yeah. when uh, you know, uh, the exporters export, the revenues come through the banks. Yeah. And so they hold the money for some time before mm. they even give to the exporters. And they don't give the monies back to the exporters in dollars. In dollars. They give it to them in Local cities, currency, yes. which means that they are holding on to the, the forex, the forex oh, yeah. and are using them for their purpose. So mm. they owe the, uh, the, the exporters in a way, yeah, sure. and they have some responsibility towards them. So the little they can do is to turn their, their uh, focus also on them and assist them. Secondly, also, we've been working closely with uh, Exim Bank right. and I've been advocating strongly that they should also do some, um, put dedicated funds for the SMEs because most of these exporters are small in nature. They are small and medium enterprise. They are not large right. enterprises. And that is the reason why uh, the bank was um, established to, to provide financial support to the exporters. Right. And uh, of late, there has been some very good movements around there to the extent that even uh, on Friday, when we went to launch uh, the Coconut Festival, yes. they announced that they are dedicating 30 million, do uh, sorry, 30 million Ghana cities uh, towards, solely towards the development of the coconut industry, That's true. which was a very laudable Absolutely. initiative. Absolutely. Also, they announced recently that the yam sector is also going to get support mm. from them, I think also of an equal 30 million, if I'm not mistaken, 30 Ghana million okay. Ghana cities, again, solely for... Uh, yam the yam exports and so these are very good signs and i strongly uh, uh, applaud them for that and urge them to continue that way and look at all the priority sectors that we have identified in the national export development strategy document yeah. and provide our support if we go at it and we are consistent uh, i'm very very positive that we can achieve the 25 billion dollars mm. of non-traditional exports only mm. and then add the traditionals to it and we should be eating around 40 and 50 billion dollars yeah if only, you know, we provide that support yeah. financially, mm. uh, coupled with the technical support that we have been providing by way of training the exporters through our export school. Right. That gives them capacity to now know what to do and follow the footsteps of Golden Riverside and, and, and Co. Yeah. Now we are also grooming up young 
uh, people who are interested in going to export to the right. extent that we even have a program now we call Youth in Exports Program, right? Which is aimed at As under um, the auspices of the of GEPA of GEPA. Okay. And uh, we have uh, identified some mentors, seasoned exporters, and have recruited young, interested uh, you know, people who are under their feet. Okay. Under their feet. And one of the mentors is yes, Mr. Antu, yeah, okay. And he's done so well. Okay. At least he has graduated about two. Okay. Two of them who are, are they almost doing well? on their own. Yeah, they are doing doing very very well. Well. One has been mm. obviously turned to a farm manager. Another person is also, after his one and a half acres, trying to do more. Oh, so okay. I think they are right. doing well. Oh, great, great, great. And okay. we, are, we are upscaling the program this year. Okay. Uh, we started with 20 uh, youth as a pilot. Right. It was very successful. Now we want to upscale to almost 100. Wow. And if we have the resources, we can even do 1,000. Wow. And uh, interestingly, National Service Secretariat has also seen what we are doing and they want to partner us great. for this new batch yeah. of uh, service personnel so and that I we can get there. a few of them also to enroll on the program. Right, great. All right, promoting and optimizing Ghana's, uh, the value of Ghana's exports is what we're discussing tonight on our import here on Metropolitan Television. It's time for us to go for a quick break. When we bounce back, we'll continue the discussion. Please do stay with us. Every now and again, Goyle makes good things happen. This time, Goyle has introduced Super XP Run 95, a higher grade fuel loaded with additives and yet sold at the same price as normal fuel. Goyle Super XP Run 95 enhances engine performance like never before. It maintains the engine by keeping it clean from carbon deposits. Goyle Super XP Run 95 is designed to burn slowly and thus improves fuel economy, making you save money after several kilometers. Go Super XP Run 95 gives you a smooth driving experience that is less vibrations. Fill up with Go Super XP Run 95. Now there's no need to pay more for any higher grade fuel. Goil has that sorted. Goil, good energy. Because you see, without our taxes, we wouldn't have good roads, good schools, better hospitals, street lights, and other very important social amenities. When we pay our taxes, we give our children free and quality education. Tell God, my money too small, why should I pay my tax? Look, small. Salifu, it doesn't matter how small or big your business or income is, you still have to pay your taxes. The little taxes from each and every one of us, when put together, could give your community clean water or that deprived school with tables and chairs. Please pay your taxes. It is your responsibility. It is your civic duty. It is the law. Impressive factory. If only I had listened to you, I wouldn't have been in this mess. That devastating fire virtually wiped out the whole factory and my warehouse. Remember my misfortunes last year? Serene insurance assets all risk fire policies that I took were there to pay for my damaged stocks in the warehouse. And my machines that were affected by the floods have been replaced. My accident vehicle is back on the road. Thanks to Serene Insurance Motor Policy. Suddenly my goods are on the IC covered with their marine cargo insurance policy. I was just telling Ajima about Serene Insurance. Oh, Ajima, tell him more. As a road contractor, I make sure I do my contractors all risk insurance for the projects and then workers compensation for all the workers on site with serene insurance they will make sure they'll cover your known tomorrow today serene insurance a new face of insurance call us now MPS Terminal 3 is Africa's new state-of-the-art container terminal at Tema Port. For manufacturers, agro-processors and traders, the new port means business can be done faster. This infrastructure boost will improve Ghana's port handling capacity, connect more trading routes and oil the engine of growth for the economy. 
creating great opportunities across all sectors as Africa's markets merge and become the largest trading bloc globally. MPS, we connect, you thrive. All right, so you're welcome back. Um, in the studios with me tonight is Mr. Alexander Dajawa. He's Director of Projects at the Ghana Export Promotion Authority. And also in the studios with me is Mr. Solomon Nto Uyafe, who is the Chief Executive Officer of Golden Riverside Limited. They are basically into the export of pineapple uh, here in Ghana. And tonight, remember, we're discussing how to promote and optimize the value of Ghana's exports. And so I've been told by the production team that we can activate the phone line for you to call in. And the number to dial as usual is 020-552-8353. 020-552-8353. You can call in and contribute to the discussion. Pretty shortly, I shall also be coming to the mailbox so we can share your messages with the rest of the world. So let me come to you, Mr. Dajawa, and uh, find out the level of support uh, you offer uh, to Ghanaian exporters well, as the sole agency responsible for promoting exports yeah. from Ghana. Well, I, I indicated that our mandate is in twofold. Mm. <clears throat> we do development and we do promotion. Right. And um, our activities are in about five different uh, areas. Mm. Uh, first of all, we provide market information, uh, export market information to our exporters to make them um, come up to speed with what the market trends are. Right. Where there are demand for products, uh, the market's conditions, market requirements, what you need to do to be able to export successfully. Uh, the second thing we also do is to train exporters or provide them capacity building so that they know what to do mm. to be able to succeed uh, internationally because right. international trade is quite complex. Uh, you know, Solomon has made some uh, very useful points about uh, how difficult it is to uh, export and, and perhaps if there are challenges, how do yeah. you resolve them with your buyer? Mm. Because as for the buyer, all he wants is his uh, pro produce yeah. that you have to send to him. He doesn't care about what happens locally. Yeah. Once you put paper to pen and say you have agreed, I'll supply you weekly yeah. one container. He expects that you get his no, one container. Be done, yeah, sure. but, and if there's a problem, then there's a big challenge internationally because he can sue you. So exporters need to know things like this to be able to successful. So we do capacity building uh, for exporters. Uh, we also go into a little bit of development, which I mentioned about uh, providing circuits and all that. Yeah. Strictly speaking, that is uh, beyond us because we don't have the money to invest that much. Mm. But then we saw the lacuna that uh, particularly for production for exports. Right. You know, Ministry of Agri focuses a lot more on food security. Mm. And so they have their own um, what you call it, uh, priority areas to look at. Right. But we deal with exports mainly. So when we see that there's a shortfall or there's a challenge, for example, in supply capacity, mm. we cannot stay aloof. So the little money we have, we try to invest in the development side of things, which right. shouldn't have been the case. And so we were forced in a way to show the way because not many of the agencies that are supposed to invest in, de in development are doing so. And so that's another thing that we've been doing. And okay. So for the last four or five years, you see us more active, even now in development, than you see us going to trade fairs and things like that. Right. 
And then we also do trade fairs. Okay. We take exporters. We'll, we'll, we'll deal with the trade fairs when we come back. But let's go onto the phone lines and welcome uh, Jasper from Takrade. Hello, Jasper. Hello. Good evening. Good, Good evening, sir. Yeah, please. Uh, I would like to make a little contribution on the discussion. Please, please shoot. Okay. Uh, I would like to appreciate my brother Solomon uh, for single handedly, you know, handling farm and exporting uh, from Ghana to other countries. Uh, that is very helpful as uh, the youth and would like to uh, learn from him. If you can also leave his uh, location where we can also contact him and pick up, you know, I will okay. we'll be very glad. All right. Okay, so he's here. Um, he says he wants your location. Or unless you, yeah. Right, right. I'm, I'm located on the Ebri and Sound Road. Um, so we'll leave our contacts with the producers. Team, so, yeah, sure. yeah, you yeah. can contact them. For, yeah, so you can contact it. our producers. They would uh, uh, give you uh, his details. Maybe you'd have to leave your contact with them so that they would reach you after uh, the Can show. I say something small to that? In fact, sure. to be frank with you, the uh, program, which is the Youth in Export program, mm. Started when my CEO visited Mr. Biafe's farm. Okay. okay. Uh, she was so amazed at what she saw. Right. And saw Mr. Biafe as a relatively young person yeah. who has gone into farming. And he told us that when he finished school, I think university, he went straight into farming. He finished in 2004. And, and then went straight into farming. Into farming. Wow. And you are, I mean, you are amazed when you, when you visit his farm. We yeah. didn't even want to leave because yeah. the serenity, the greenery. Yeah. And the extent to which he's planted, yeah. it was amazing. Yeah, but as soon as we came back, my, my, my CEO said, no, we have to do something for the youth, and we yeah. can use him as our mentor. Sure. And yeah. That's how the whole thing started. So yeah. I'm happy about the question that uh, uh, our viewer asked. And, yeah. and I can assure you that Mr. Weafe is ready right. to provide that uh, training Great. to anybody who is interested. Great. Great. We'll leave your contacts with, with them so that sure. he can call, Jasper can call and then uh, have it. He's calling all the way from Tak Radio. Right. So you can imagine the impact you are making. Yes, uh, so you are on, on trade fairs. You take some yeah, of the so, exporters Yes, to... so trade fairs is also one of the things that we do. We mm. take exporters to fairs mm. and we are noted for uh, our participation in international fairs. We participate in various uh, fairs, um, you know, craft fairs, uh, fruits Which and vegetables mm. fairs, uh, textile fairs, um, processed food fairs, and all that, chocolate fairs, you know, for all, ta all kinds of fairs uh, on behalf of our exporters, we organize them to go. And we pay for the stand, you know, and uh, sometimes we take about uh, 10 booths, sometimes we get a whole pavilion as we do in Fruit Logistica, which costs us sometimes 70,000 euros. Yeah. And then we do promotion. We even take the samples of the products along for them. Wow. So all they need to do is to cater for their airfare mm. and also accommodation. Right. And this has yielded a lot of results. Results. And I dare say that the uh, uh, exports that we have seen in recent years were directly as a result of our participation in those fairs. It's ongoing now. And as I speak, my CEO is even in a show in the U.S. with right. exporters. Right. And, and we are noted for that. So we partner with various other organizations to put these shows together. Now, these days, we are also thinking about organizing some big shows, even in Ghana, okay. where we can invite buyers mm. this time to come down to Ghana and we'll organize you know, credible and very good companies from whom they can buy so that it is not only one way, but then now they can come to Ghana. Mm. And our view is that when they come to Ghana, many other things can result from that. Even right. tourism mm. can result as a result of that. Okay. All right, let's go on to the phone lines uh, once again and welcome Sami. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening. How are you? I'm terrific, by Grace. Thank you for asking. I hope you are well, Thanks too. Thanks for the good work you are doing. Um, Thank you. Uh, I'm speaking from who? I'm interested in the coconut business, and I have a coconut farm. Okay. Yeah, and I want... Hello? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I have a coconut farm, and... Uh, I uh, had the man from the gentleman from Ghana Export Promotion uh, Authority. Authority yes. They providing people with uh, yeah. assisting them with coconut kidneys or something. Yes. Yes, exactly. How do they go about it? Because last year I wanted some. Yeah, so I wanted to know how we can get in touch with their siblings. But you said they are here to the high Britain. Right. Which can help us. 
to uh, uh, increase their production or that way. I mean, the yields is better than the traditional one. Right. So I want to find out from him, how can we get in touch with them to be able to get a product to be. Thank okay. you very much. All right. Thank you very much, Sammy. We're grateful to you for your call all the way from the Volta region. Yeah. Uh, who? Yes, yes, yes. I must say that our support covers all the coconut growing areas of Ghana, okay. including Volta region. We've mm. distributed coconut seedlings in the Volta region in the past. Only recently, um, for the year 2022, we've mm. done our first phase right. of coconut seedlings distribution. Okay. And we are set to continue the maybe by the phase? end of September, which will be con uh, distributing more. Okay. So I encourage him to visit our uh, regional office. Regional, you have a regional office, office in, in Ho. Ho. Okay. Regional, I think it's around the uh, Ministry of Agri area. Okay. Visit us. Our regional uh, officer is called uh, Chris Amponsan. Okay. And so once you visit him, uh, he would, he would take your details and give you the further directions on what to do. Mm. But we encourage people to join. There's a big coconut association, right. which we call the Federation of Coconut uh, Exporters. Um, and then we have Coconut Farmers Association of Ghana, which is in all the regions. Mm. And so we want to, what we normally would do is to use the associations to distribute the coconut seedlings right. because we want to be sure that these the people, people that who are the, beneficiaries are real sure. coconut right. farmers. Mm. And we hold the associations responsible yeah. when something goes wrong. goes wrong. So Mr. Amponsan will give you further details as to how to join the association. Okay. And, and you benefit. be sure that you also get some of the seedlings. Okay. All right. We are going back onto the phone lines. I understand we have Dr. Emmanuel who is calling us from Adenta Frafraha. Good evening, Doc. Yeah, good evening. Yes, sir. Um, I want to find out from uh, Mr. Alex. Alex Dagawa, yes, uh, with my very good friend, we're in the University of Dakar together. Okay, <laughs> and uh, I want to find out uh, doing some sweet pepper and ginger mm. in the Volta region, and how I can get to to export it. Okay, uh, yeah, I need, I need, um, I would need some technical advice how okay. to uh, do about, well, about this, the production it. and then the steps, the process. Right. Okay. Thank you very much, Doc. We're grateful. He would uh, give you some response. Yeah, very well. Uh, Doc, how are you? Um, yes. Um, the vegetable sector is another key area. We call it fruits and vegetables. So yeah. we provide support for fruits. We also provide support for vegetables. vegetables to the extent yeah. that we even give uh, seeds right. to farmers through the association once again called the Vegetable Exporters Association. So what I would encourage him to do again is to either visit us at the head office or if you are near now in Volta region, yeah. you will see our regional officer, mm. and then we will, we will be able to advise as mm. to how to do that. Right. Uh, we provide good agricultural practices for those, or those farmers also who farm, because you need to, as I said already, uh, meet the market requirements, which mm. are very stringent. Yeah. Uh, how to apply your pesticides, how to ensure that uh, your farms are well organized and all that. That is a lot of training. And uh, we, we provide that support also. So please visit us, and then we'll take you through the process. Right. Great. Okay, so the number you can also dial is 020 uh, We're going to be able to take your calls and then, uh, so they can contribute to the discussion. The one says, good evening, please. How do I get some, of, uh, some coconut seedlings and uh, your phone number? Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's no name to this message, mm -hmm. and so you can uh, please... Uh, reach our production team via the same number and leave your number there and your name and then we'll be able to reach you. We'll get some, we elicit some res response uh, from them and, and, and reach you. I am told we have Fusheni from the Northern Region uh, on the lines. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Master. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, I'm in Northeast Region currently. Northeast, Nalerigo, okay. Are you in uh, Wali Wali yeah, or Nalerigo? I'm at, I'm at uh, Chiripone. Chiripone, okay. Okay, sure, right. Um, please flow. Please uh, tell the officer that we need some of the citizens in, in Kirponi district. We have okay. uh, areas where we can, I mean, show that it's in the citizens. Okay. Okay. Um, All right. So, so if uh, they can get some for, for, for us here. Yeah. Okay. Um, Okay, so I'm right. sure you'd want to tell yeah. him to go to the um, um, to your original office. I'm very happy about this interest that is being shown yes. in coconut. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, coconut, if you read the stories that have been published, uh, this week, uh, sorry, last, yeah, this week, yeah. Uh, starting from Saturday, when mm -hmm. we launched um, the Coconut Festival in uh, uh, LMBL in yeah. the Western region, yes. you see that my CEO is very, very committed to us 
providing further support for the coconut industry because right. it's a very, very prospective, prospective industry. Yeah. Uh, if you look at the trends, mm. it's getting so overwhelming. It's quite promising, yeah. Very promising because, you know, now coconut, everybody wants coconut, to drink coconut water. water yeah, sure. Europeans even come to Ghana specifically to taste Ghanaian coconut. coconut yeah. And it's the best in the world. Because if you, if you taste Ghana's coconut compared to even those that are in large plantations in Philippines and so on, mm. you'll be amazed that you know, the Ghanaian coconut is so nice. And the interesting thing too is that we are providing a hybrid mm. uh, disease resistant ones, okay. not resistant, tolerant, yes. Yes. to the extent that the, the disease is difficult, it finds it difficult to attack, this attack one. yeah. these ones. Mm. And they are also short gestation uh, you know, um, hybrids. Within right. three, four years, you are harvesting. You are harvesting. And so the early ones that we, we provided to the farmers, they are, they are now they are, harvesting, they are and harvesting sure and some of them okay. are even exporting. All right. So, so they should do that. Let's go. Yeah, we'll them. come back. I'm but then we are going that. to be overwhelmed. I, I must say that we don't have, uh, the resources are not unlimited. All right. So, so let's go. Let's we, we should let, also, let's go to East, uh, we should also uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, uh, expectations. Uh, expectations have to be lowered. In yeah, the have to be lowered. Otherwise, <laughs> all right. Yeah. Uh, good evening. I'm told we have uh, Nathaniel from the Upper East Region. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I am Nathaniel from Paga Upper East. Paga. Okay. Right. Yes. Great. Uh, yes. I'm a young farmer. I'm into pepper production. Mm. And there's uh, usually year on year a uh, high uh, uh, post harvest loss. Wow. And we don't get uh, the required market for the for the product. Yeah. So fortunately, I was, I'm just watching your program, and I want to ask the the technical person sitting yeah. there yeah. how they they will be able to help we do into the production. Right. Great. Thank you very much indeed, Nat. We are grateful to you for your call. It's calling all the way from Paga. Yeah. In the Upper East Region. Okay. Yes. Okay. What I would say is that um, for fresh, it will be a bit difficult because you are so far away. Mm. And pepper is such that, you know, it needs to get to the market quite fresh. Mm. If we had uh, our airport uh, internationalized in Tamale, Tamale yeah, sure. where you can pick straight from the north, straight into the market, yeah, absolutely. it would have been good. But yeah. for now, even though plants are afoot to, to do that, yeah. to establish direct links from there yeah, to sure. Europe yeah. with warehousing and all that, it would take a while. Yeah. So I would encourage him, don't abandon your uh, pepper farm, by all means farm, but then dry it very well. Right. And then there is a market for the dried also, Pepe, and okay. even powder, right. and even puree. Right. So uh, once again, I would encourage you to visit our regional uh, office. office in Tamale. Our regional no, in Boga, Boga, Tanga. Uh, you, you is Cheriponi is where? No, Cheriponi is, is northern region. Yes. But so we upper have east, one. Cheriponi is northeast region. Northeast. And, okay. and this one is calling from Paga in the upper east region. Oh, okay. So yes, both, both regions, we have yeah, one sure. in... Uh, Bag, um, Nalerigu. That's the northeast regional capital. Oh, okay. Uh, and, uh, well, our northern region takes care of the whole of northern, northern Savannah. Sector. Okay, so upper okay. and northeast yes. should we go are to not, northern region. We are not present in all the sister regions now, okay. you know, because of the new region. Right. Yeah. We are yet to establish, but we are working towards okay. that. So sure. for now, if you are in the northern region or mm. northeast region, mm. you still will have to go to the northern Kamale. region. Yeah, or sure. if um, Borga is nearer to you, then of course you have to go to Borga. Mm. and see our regional officers there. Okay, yeah. all right. Okay, so I think we're going to take our last caller. We are being overwhelmed with the calls uh, now. We have Grace from uh, Bumpurugu, Yoyo, also from, oh. I'm sure, the Northeast region. Yes, uh, good evening, Madam Grace. Yes, sir, boss. Uh, <laughs> my problem is our town, we have the long one that the seeds is red, red. Mm. Uh -huh. So I want to know whether they can also send that in for us in Northeast region because coconut, if you go to Northern region, you will even find one to buy and it's very important for us. Mm. Okay. All right. Thank so you. help me. Help us to also get coconut, coconut in our coconut. area. <laughs> right. Great. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Inid. I think Madam Grace yeah, will be our last caller. Yeah. Uh, you, you probably would have to. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. what I'll say, Madam Grace, thank you so much. One thing about coconut is that uh, it grows almost um, everywhere. You only need a certain minimum uh, water, uh, what do you call it, um, um, rainfall to be able to uh, farm it successfully. Right. And we would have to look at the, the land, mm. you know, do some assessment. Uh, it would depend on the uh, Ministry of Agri. Yeah. regional officers to do the assessment on our behalf mm. and if it is proven that the area particular area where they are operating from in the north 
uh, will be good for coconut. Mm. By all means, we can deploy a few of those also there. Okay. We have barely um, two minutes to go. So um, you are the exporter. I want you to tell us what your expectations are of government, of the GEPA, uh, in order to ensure that you uh, do your business seamlessly and smoothly. Just 30 seconds. Right. Um, I believe um, with the effort that GEPA is putting up, uh, let me say um, with the pineapple suckers they gave to farmers yes. some time ago, that has uh, yielded the result of we increasing our oh, tonnages yes, mm. last year. Because they gave this two, three years ago, and now when we started harvesting them, we are seeing results. So um, uh, GEPA should be given the needed support, mm. and then the exporters also should be given the needed support so that right. we can bring in the foreign exchange that we are looking for. Right. So, um, Mr. Dejawa, uh, tell us, what's the, uh, the way forward for our export sector as a country? Just also 30 seconds. Well, for me, I would um, call for support for the National Export Development Strategy, which mm. we are implementing now. Mm. We need multi-sectoral um, support. Right. Inter-institution cannot do it alone. Mm. And every time we have opportunity, we tell everybody that we need everybody to come on board. Right. We need Ghana Enterprises Agency, we need Ghana Standards Authority and mm. all the agencies. Right. We need the support of industry, the private sector, uh, Solomon's groups, uh, right. associations mm. to come to us. Let us all work together and I'm sure that uh, at the end of the day, we'll all be happy right. that we collaborated. Great. Uh, thank you very much. Mr. Alexander Dejawa is the Director of Projects at the Ghana Exports Promotion Authority, GEPA. And uh, also in the studios, Mr. Solomon Nto Yafe, who is also the Chief Executive Officer of Golden Riverside Limited, the pineapple exporters. And tonight we've been discussing how to promote and optimize the value of Ghana's exports. Uh, on Iron Port here on Metropolitan Television, we say big thanks to our sponsors, uh, Ghana Revenue Authority, Goyal Company Limited, Serene Insurance, Ghana Link Network Services, and Meridian Port Services, MPS. Remember, the show is powered by the Ghana Port and Harbors Authority. Thanks uh, to the gentlemen for making it. And remember, the abridged version of the show is aired every Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. On Ghana Television GTV. My name is Kennedy Mona. God willing, we shall bounce back next week with another wonderful edition of Iron Port. Have a super week ahead and keep enjoying our programs. Good evening. <laughs>